Good morning, Jacqueline. It's Sunday, and when you gave me this week's topic of favorite historical moment, country, or person from 1400 to 1700, I'd like to give you the benefit of the doubt and say that you didn't know just how wicked you were being, but I don't believe that for a second, so I blame you entirely. One historical moment, country, or person from 300 years worth of time, and not just any 300 years, but 300 years when we were getting rid of our sleepy slump from the Dark Ages? Impossible. Well, I won't play into your game, Missy. I'm choosing one of each. Just try and stop me. One. Favorite moment? Spanish Armada, 1588. Easy. In one swift moment, the resilience of the English people, and you know, the weather. Remember that end-all storm, unprecedented in magnitude and ferocity? Yeah, us mere mortals are nothing in the face of Mother Nature. Gave those Spaniards one four, set them entirely bankrupt, their entire country's forests depleted, ending their golden century and allowing England and France to bicker for the next couple hundred years about who's top dog. Also, let's not forget that as an island nation, you need a heck of a navy, and from that moment on, nobody ever questioned the Royal Navy. Like, ever. Two, favorite country. You think I'm gonna say England, don't you, Jacqueline? Especially since you cleverly gave me a time period with all my beloved tutors in it, but no, I gave England the last round. I'm gonna go with Russia on this one. Now, I'm certainly no fan of the way Russia's been behaving lately, but we're gonna throw back quite a ways this time to Peter the Great. And I'm pushing the timeline back a little bit with this one since he died in 1725, but don't look at me like that. We're the gods of this vlog and we make the rules. Until Peter's rule, Russia was kind of doing its own thing and that was fine by anyone because they weren't really European enough to be European and they weren't really Asian enough to be Asian. And that was fine with everyone because Asia just felt they were way too Western and Europe felt that they were just way too not Europe. But then Peter went and took a tour of Europe and he decided, dude, this is where it's at. I don't want to be Oriental anymore. Look, look, Europe, look how Occidental I am. Can we come into your treehouse? And Europe laughed. And if you look at the Russian aristocracy, you see why Europe laughed. They were in these big, heavy coats and furs because Russia's freaking cold. And they had thick, mangly hair and big old long beards. So Peter said, forget that. You'll see. You'll all see. I can be Western. And he built freaking St. Petersburg, which was supposed to be like Versailles, but for Russia, and bigger and better. And he mandated beard laws, which meant that you had to shave your beard, and if you didn't want to shave your beard because you clung to the old ways, you had to pay a beard tax, which gave you a beard license. And if you didn't carry around your beard license, the beard police were allowed to publicly tackle you and hold you down and shave your beard. And that's why Russia wins this round, because any country that implements a beard tax so they can be invited to Europe's birthday parties is A-OK -okay with me. Third, favorite person. Again, Jacqueline, I know you expect me to go with a tutor, either Anne Boleyn or Elizabeth I, but if I always did what was expected of me, you'd get bored. I'm going with Frederick William I of Prussia, you know, back when Prussia was still a thing. I picked him because he's a seriously militaristic king, like he built up Prussia's little tiny army, and he actually hired people of tall build to be part of his giant legion, and he actually considered getting rid of all the courses in education that didn't actually help with military aid or medical. I mean, luckily he talked himself out of that one. And despite this completely huge focus on military, by the end of his reign he had never actually started a war, and he was only involved in small skirmishes during the Great Northern War. He didn't get along with his son, Frederick II, very well, but how boring would history be if kings actually got along with their princes? As fate would have it, old F.W. got a spindly little sickly son in Fritz. And they disagreed so much that he even tried to run away once. He was heading to England with his tutor. I'm not saying gay. History's still debating that one. And of course they got caught, so Frederick William naturally had his tutor beheaded in front of his son's eyes. But back to why Frederick William wins this round, Prussia was out for the count after the Thirty Years' War. And then Frederick William comes along and he makes Prussia into something again. You know what Prussia went on to do? Become Germany. Which couldn't have been done if Frederick William didn't work so hard and so autocratically during his reign. There we are, Jacqueline. I hope that was fun. I'll see you on Thursday.